Hello and welcome back to another episode of I read this book and uh, in this episode I'm going to be talking about failing to succeed and I'm so honored so happy so delighted to have Mr. Vethi Swaran K uh, the writer of Failing to Succeed Mr. Vethi Swaran uh, was the founder of the first e-commerce company of India called India Plaza that began in 1999 India Plaza went through an incredible journey of ups and downs which mr vethi swaring uh, mr vethi swaring inspiringly held on to and uh, then uh, as a serial entrepreneur sir after writing uh, this book has started again with a venture in health called again drinks so so happy to have sir sir it's a lovely book how you doing on a sunday afternoon <laughs> thank you so much nishan for having me it's a pleasure to be on the show and uh, i've seen your earlier episodes with other authors so i'm also looking forward to having a great episode with you thank you so much for speaking about the book and i recommend this book to everybody sir i would like you to tell me uh when you had your india plaza journey and when you were going through it and the way it ended you know it's not the ending that we wish for for such a long and beautiful journey so did you who gave you the idea of sharing this journey in its true sense in the form of a book while knowing that it ends in a way which shakes people to the core what was the idea of since you knew the end of the book you it wasn't a work in progress how did you approach the ending of the book given the journey how was it you know to be honest uh, i had no idea of or plans of writing a book after the journey ended in 2013 and 2014 i went to bombay i was consulting with the tata group i spent a year there and um, on and off i thought i might share some thoughts of my journey but never in the form of a book i thought i'll probably write a blog and write some share some information with people the parts of it they may find useful but i could never come around to writing it because like you said it wasn't the story that we wanted to write mm-hmm. and hence i wasn't keen on writing it uh, it so happened in 2015 there was an article about me in the mint the mint newspaper at the paper at the time 2015 actually the internet came to india in 1995 2015 marked 20 years of the internet in india and to commemorate the 20 years mint actually picked 20 people institutions and events to commemorate commemorate the 20 years and for some reason that i'm not aware of they picked me as one of the person saying that you have to be there so humble. and i tried <laughs> so i i kept telling them saying why are you calling me there are so many other people who have done so well this they were quite insistent saying no the failure that you have had is an important part of internet journey in india how entrepreneurs have used the internet and it's not all good and there are other sides of the story people must know so we insist that you be part of it so for whatever you know we had a very nice conversation and that uh, interview that was done by uh, a friend called ashish mishra now and when the interview came out it became a very very popular and so many people wrote in to me same here sir same here i read that interview it was such a shaking interview it was such a hard hitting piece and mint was mint did that kind of thing a lot that was their dream run you can say they were on a roll and it was a beautiful beautiful interview so sorry for the interjection sir <laughs> couldn't resist so so that interview came out so well one of the people who read it amongst people like you so many of them wrote and read and wrote to me one of them was professor jos from i am bangalore he wrote to me and said can i talk to you and uh, then he told me that he runs this course called corporate failures in i am bangalore uh, for students it's an optional course in the second year and uh, he said it's a good course more and more students are taking it but i'm struggling to deliver the course properly because all my case studies are all outside india and he said the reason is in india nobody wants to come and say they failed everybody wants to come and say how i succeeded but there's nobody else who nobody who comes and says i failed and when i read your interview i thought here is a person who spoken about it so can you come and speak you are my first indian case study in that sense 
and i was very hesitant about doing that because you know, to be honest i also felt a little um, down and dejected and you know not disappointed with what happened so i was in keen on going out and talking about it again and again but he insisted so i said okay let's just go and see what happens i went and spoke to his students and the two hour session with the students one the student loved it more importantly it changed my view i came out of the college and realized that there is a large audience out there willing to listen to stories about failures and it's not that everybody wants to talk successes so that's when i came back and said maybe i should now seriously look at writing a blog i was still not thinking a book my cousin who was actually in hyderabad he also read the interview and then he came and said look i know what happened but i when i read the interview i realized that there is such a strong story out there uh, you should really put it in the form of a book and i think the book will be very valued in indian corporate and b school circles apart from startups and entrepreneurs and that's when i wrote the book so that's when i said okay let's just do it and then i well opened a laptop and started typing so that was a long journey writing the book itself took me a year that i totally imagine must be extremely i mean it must be something sir because when i read the article i was literally taken aback i was a student entrepreneur then i was like a very serious about this and when i read the article my i showed it to my brother and he was like oh my god what a story and then when i read the book and the way you've written that piece where you actually went out of the college after speaking and that cathartic moment of breaking down because that was a story which once you must have poured it out it must have poured your heart out and it must be so so beautiful because it it, it sort of brings meaning to that chaos that you know it it sort of brings that meaning to that story and that that's that's perhaps why i love the book so much because of course the wisdom that you've shared it only can come from you but that's accessible through other mediums as well but this was only this was something that only you could have delivered so i am bangalore your cousin and then publishers putting it out so how how did the publishers try to uh, promote the book so what was their strategy of going ahead and promoting the book i mean it must be very difficult since uh, this is a touchy topic you know a lot of people i don't know how this works i talked to mr siddharth rao they had their own strategy kashyap devra had their own strategy what was yours and publisher strategy for this so i actually in our case in my case the publisher was very surprised with the book so i got i connected to the publisher through my cousin who said i'll connect you to rupa and obviously what he didn't realize but i knew is that i knew rupa very well because we were selling rupa's books on india plaza for so many years <laughs> the first time the first time rupa went online with their book publications in india was at india plaza so obviously i knew them very well and when i reached out they said of course if you are the best person in india who can write about e-commerce so please write okay i don't think they realized what was the story the surprise happened when i sent them the manuscript i wrote the first draft and sent it to them and there was an absolute silence for about 4 weeks normally they come back and <laughs> they never came back so i thought maybe they were not interested so i gave up i said okay they're not interested 4 weeks later i got a call from them and then we had a long conversation and they said look we thought you're writing about e-commerce so we thought you're going to say how to build a website and how to do digital marketing how to put up products how to give promotions how to give discount this is not an e-commerce story you so this is a totally different thing they're taken aback that you wrote this story so they actually expected a primer more like an official book on how to do e-commerce using my experience but if you read the book which you have done it has nothing to do with e-commerce there's one small section about e-commerce but it is more an entrepreneur's journey so they were a little bit surprised but then said look since you're coming like this we'll have to redo this book and then they gave some inputs the inputs was that if you're going to write this please write it in a different manner please use this please avoid this please don't mention this please keep these rules in mind and redo this book i'll tell you some interesting thing the first time i wrote the book draft it had about 70000 words approximately and then based on their inputs i wrote another 100000 words and out of the 100000 words more than 50000 words were new 
which means I practically rewrote the book, oh, and yeah. I sent it to them. And the first draft, the second draft that went to them had no connection. And obviously, I'm not a writer. I'm not an author either. So I told them that look, you want me to write this book, but I'm not an author. So I hope it comes out well. Or would you like to use a ghost writer? They said no. We don't do ghost writing. Not for this book. What you've written is fine. Much later, and I've mentioned this in the book somewhere. Says that what their executive editor, who's a good friend now, told me, is that in most of these cases, especially when you're writing a story, the most difficult thing is to write a story. Right? Many people write very well, but they don't have a good story to tell. You have a great story to tell. Don't worry about it. You write the story. The book will take care of itself, and that's what happened. So a lot of people have asked me saying, "Did you take help from the editor? Did any of them write for you?" The reality is, every single word on the book is written by me. Nobody helped me. What the editor did is they helped me with the editing of the book. The final manuscript was edited from the original one, but all the words were mine. And the strategy of that was very simple. He said, "Look, it's an e-commerce book. Simply promote it online on Amazon and all of that." And it was an irony that the book talks about Amazon and Flipkart in India, and we use that to sell a lot. But there was no other strategy in that sense. But we launched it using the same professor at IIM Bangalore and a Thai charter member. I invited them for a launch, and the professor spoke about that Mint article, and he he invited me for the course, and we had a small event. I also did a nice interview in the Times of India on the day the book came out because they said, "Look, they they said we don't do book interviews, but they read the book and realized this is not a normal book." Yeah, and they said, "Okay, we'll do it." So that's how we promoted. Otherwise, we did nothing. That's incredible. And how how's the response, sir? I mean, how are people taking the book? What's what's been like the response? So you know, we finished the first run uh, of hard hardcover. We've now gone to paperback, which is the version you're holding. Uh, it continues to sell a lot in uh, the Kindle version. But the most powerful thing for me is in the year 2017 when the book was launched. end of the year the tata literature shortlisted it for the best business book of the year it was long listed and shortlisted in the last three this and two more books and i'm obviously the some other book won the award but i am told that it actually lost in my whisker as there should have been the business book of the year so wow. in that sense i'm quite happy i think it's there somewhere on the cover of the book saying shortlisted for that i i so that's what so earlier you know before covid sir when when we used to uh the way i used to judge a book's success was that if i used to walk on the streets of cp in delhi i am in delhi and if the book was there you know that's how i used to realize that uh, okay this book is doing really well to be able to be here because if they are selling it it means it must be selling but now there's nothing like that covid has literally torn that industry apart those people so i'm i'm happy to no so after this book i'm seeing a lot of people getting interested in cinematic interpretations of these books so when i talked to mihir dalal he wrote the big billion startup uh, so the the flipkart biography and it 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 got a, a film for itself are you also uh, looking forward to like a cinematic interpretation or if not looking forward to anybody has anybody told you about it asked you for it anything like that has happened so mm-hmm. far no nobody has reached out to me in any case it's the copyright is with the publisher but if somebody reaches out and says they want to make a cinematic version of the book i'd love it why not i mean just a great story to tell yeah absolutely so far nobody has reached out to me but you never know hopefully somebody will see this interview by you and reach absolutely out. so what 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 i'm uh, hearing about is sir i talked to the translator of hero story the biography of munjals with uh, sunil kant munjal sir wrote so they you know it it's it comes naturally to me personally because these stories are i have all as you said sir that i am bangalore professor told you that nobody in india talks about failures forget about that nobody in india talks about business successes either when have we been able to read about indian business successes like think and grow uh, stay hungry and stay foolish came out so like decades ago and then you know there are so, such few business books out of india i've read 
biographies of so many entrepreneurs of the U of of West, but I haven't read anything about. And when I read these stories, especially your story, it rings not just from a commercial or an entrepreneurial perspective. It rings from a human perspective. It talks to you as a human that what a guy goes through if things work out. When things work out, he feels like he's at the center of revolution, and when things don't work out, it's being at the eye of the storm. So it was incredible. So I want you to tell me a little about what you feel is going on uh, with. We all come from that conservative background uh, as far as business is concerned. Looking at businesses is concerned. that you know the business needs to make profits but that story somehow is getting defeated by the day i just heard flipkart is raising another round of 3 billion at a valuation of 40 billion what's your comment on it like do we finally i mean should we just concede defeat on the idea of making profits for these companies what's going on uh no i i think my view on profitability remains the same uh despite what's what's been happening in recent years and the recent uh, uh, events with uh, unicorns and startups in india i continue to believe that the company success ultimately the company must make money otherwise it's not a successful company it may be highly valued and all of that but if the company doesn't make money it just means that the uh, management never figured out a sustainable business model and to me that's the ultimate test so my view has not changed um even in the us and you know sometimes you say no the world has changed if you look at the us see how they do ipos i think allowing loss making companies to do ipos is not the challenge post ipo they must still go and make money right for example if you look at uber which some few years back was the biggest hyped ipo of a especially of a loss making company from almost 70 80 or maybe 100 billion dollar valuation crazy valuation the company still doesn't make money but looks like it is not far away from making money amazon didn't make money till they did an ipo it took several years after that but they still made money and today they were a dominating force my question to you is if amazon had continued to be a loss making company would they be the dominating force that they are today right my answer is no it's the same with facebook if facebook is not making money I don't think they will become as big a force as they are in the world if they were a loss-making company. Because sooner or later, even public investors lose patience. In India, we're just seeing it beginning happening. We're getting some nice IPOs happening of loss-making companies. I think it's a good step forward, allowing these companies to do IPOs. But having said that, I don't think if they continue to be a loss-making company for several years down the line, then I don't think the success factor is the fact that they did an IPO. I, in my view, I still think it wouldn't work. they must use the proceeds of the public money and go and now build a sustainable business that continues in my view at least an ultimate test and probably the only success factor sir it's also about the time horizon right i mean given the funding which is infinite money like infinite monkey theorem plays out here it which says that a monkey will just keep banging his hands on the typewriter and eventually write shakespeare hamlet so if you give somebody so much of money and it's like infinite it by money buys time money buys iterations money buys chance to pivot eventually everybody can figure out a way to make money right is are we missing out on the context of uh what's the call horizon time horizon is is what people say right the adam newman the vwork founder used to say he's not in the best books right now but he says that it's about the horizon when you're talking about us we'll make money in like 20 30 years do you think that that may be the case with these companies they will eventually make money but they'll take 20 years flipkart is near 20 years anyway so flipkart got acquired so whether it makes money or now it is no irrelevant right okay. because it is now part of a large corporate that makes money so whether flipkart in itself makes money is really a moot point because now they can choose to make money or choose not to make money the test for flipkart was as long as it was a new it's independent company when it becomes part of walmart really doesn't matter whether it makes money or not the management will it's such a large global corporation it just like another unit sometimes it makes money sometimes they'll eventually figure out so that's no longer a relevant point it's become quite moot 
as long as companies remain independent i think the test is to make money time horizon you're right i mean you can't have infinite money but you know i continue to believe that if even with access to infinite capital and hence infinite time it is not a done deal that eventually a company will make money i don't think it will if you take a bad product or a service that customers don't want or a, or a, or a business model that is not tuned to becoming profitable or making gross margins you can throw as much time and money at it it will still not make money so i don't think that in this case it may be the infinite monkey theorem but i don't think in this case the monkey will write the shakespeare it will just keep typing junk only even if it 30 years later so okay. that's my view i don't eventually they will not figure out unless they plan to make money it won't happen there's no fluke here making money is not fluke you have to plan for it no but what they what they say is that we can make money because we have so many people we are growing growth is the holy grail we are growing as far as the number of people who are choosing to use our service so we'll monetize and when we monetize we'll make a lot of money at once that's the play it's it's not happened before amazon is just a straight case it doesn't happen like that this logic that i will keep on losing money till one fine day i say now i have so many customers i will make money doesn't matter and won't happen and you know the specific point if you read the book i have dealt with it which is the the last man standing right i yes, compared it to the bruce absolutely. the bruce willis movie hmm. right this is the logic saying i have so much money and then i keep putting everybody out of business and one fine day when nobody is left i am the last man standing i will make money it doesn't happen because unlike the movie there's always somebody else who's there who hmm. has more money and more stupidity and willing to spend a lot more and thereby nobody makes money you keep losing so this eventually making money is a very tough proposition so cap- capital buys the company's time but in that time they will make money only if they plan to make money this logic saying that if you give me 30 years and 5 billion dollars eventually i will make money no eventually you will make money only if you want to make money otherwise it won't happen i understood so coming to your uh, new venture which is mentioned in the book which i'll again to all the people who are viewing it please wa- uh, read the book is uh, again drinks which is like a in the preventive healthcare market i'm assuming and it's a business of health yeah in i'm so sorry if if it's not the right categorization please correct me sir uh, no you complete then i will tell you if you yes. have anything so else, it's right? it's basically replacing the unhealthy consumption of uh, drinks to health uh, with with something much more healthy so my question to you is sir uh, we have also been in the business uh, spot health only for two years though two two years and we are seeing that uh, a lot of a lot of traction that we were facing and a lot of what we were hearing as far as the news was concerned uh, on the acceptance of health as a proposition for indians majority of indians i mean it doesn't translate uh, in in at least out of the metros you know the great metros as soon as you go to the real india people are not really bothered about it. what's your experience with the health industry sir what do you see is its future so first is just to uh, clarify it's not a health drink in that sense mm-hmm. right so we've deliberately not used the word health drink we just saying it's a healthy drink mm-hmm. it's wholesome it's nutritious it basically has milk or yogurt it's got fruits vegetables honey jaggery has no sugar no preservative anybody could drink it it's wholesome it's nutritious it's filling it's tasty but it's not a health drink got in it. that sense got it's it. a healthy drink got so it's it. a big so there's different between a health drink and a healthy drink absolutely uh, but your other point is absolutely valid and it is not just in the smaller towns even in the metros the reality is what our experience has been india as a country talks health but does not walk the talk absolutely so in india sir. we are, we are all keen on saying i want to lead a healthy lifestyle so they go gymming they go jogging they go swimming they go hiking but at the earliest opportunity when they when they feel hungry for a snack they grab a samosa they grab a gulab jamun chole bhature drinks uh, chole bhature or <laughs> beverages with uh, chips with salt or you know beverages with sugar yeah so we we like talking health because it's a great topic yeah right? it makes us sound very nice but we can't nice. walk that 
yeah but we can't do it because the moment you want to always consume healthy stuff mm-hmm. which means stuff which has no sugar no salt less sh- no preservative and be careful mm-hmm. suddenly your choices get limited mm-hmm. and the reality is that the most un- unhealthiest things in the world are actually the most tastiest i mean it's a reality you can't go away absolutely from, right? of course of course so that's why it's easy to talk about health but very difficult to walk so i get it i mean it's a challenge that we face every day absolutely say, same here great concept this is a great concept no sugar no preservative but then i know that they still prefer to buy that milkshake which has so much of sugar in it so it's, sir, it's a small it, market but it's becoming more aware now hopefully it will grow hopefully it will grow that's the hope sir actually we also started uh, spot health was first spruits so there was a machine which my brother uh, invented while he was working at defense research development organization which could grow sprouts and uh, when at siachen so when they brought that machine over to moderate places they found out that the sprouts were like 300 times 300% larger and more nutritious so we built a food chain around these sprouts as the core ingredient we were making healthy momos with these sprouts and so on and so forth and we had to change the name sir <laughs> we had to go away from spruits which was the original name to classy it because spruits gave them an idea about this thing being healthy and they deliberately avoided this thing just because it was healthy so we were losing customers because we were selling healthy instead of what we had dreamed uh, of so so exactly the reason why i said i don't want to call it a health drink <laughs> because the moment i call it a health drink most people who are interested in health will stay away from it oh my god yes so what what do you think can we do about it sir i mean this way the industry is supposed to be like this i mean people's perception i mean we can't be that a uh, time uh, we can't be of that time horizon right where we <laughs> wait for 10 20 years to make money because it's very difficult so what what's your view on the uh, whole ecosystem you know the unfortunate reality and nobody wants this to happen is that an event like the covid pandemic suddenly brings awareness to people saying look maybe our time is up we can't just lead our lives the way we want we have to be a little bit more careful hopefully things like this suddenly builds more awareness that people have to be careful about their diet because you can't suddenly say oh covid is coming no let me build immunity it doesn't immunity is something that you build over time mm-hmm. it's immunity through food and beverage is through good habits not a sudden instant understanding right hopefully things like this will build more awareness not that anybody wants a pandemic um, <laughs> otherwise it <laughs> otherwise it's a long hard climb right i mean you yeah. have to keep educating educating the good thing is hopefully in metros uh, there's a very large 400 million population who are keen on this so hopefully some of them will start staying back and becoming more loyal so let's see so let's see sir absolutely sir god speed and i know we are pressed for time so i'll again once again plug this beautiful book failing to succeed and i would like to ask you the final question of uh, of the afternoon which would be uh, if you were to recommend this book to somebody having read it not written it if you were not the writer of this book and you were just to hand this over to somebody as a gift what would you say what would be your passing words well you know my passing words to be and i will be biased having written the book but i'll try and keep the bias out as much as possible i would recommend this book primarily to people who are doing their own startups or founders or are entrepreneurs and i will tell them that look entrepreneurship there are two sides like like there's a moon and there's a dark side of the moon there are two sides of entrepreneurship also there's one side that you read in the papers every day that's the side which has got big valuations unicorns ipos and success and glamour and glitter that's one side there's another side which is the dark side of the moon and uh, nobody talks about it and here is a book that talks about it and since you're an entrepreneur i suggest you read about the glitter glittering side on the newspaper you also read about the dark side of the moon through this book and then both will help you on your journey i'm not saying only this is important you read that but you read this don't go thinking there's only one side of the moon and here's a second side which very few people talk about here is a unique book that does that read the book you have both sides in mind when you go on your journey that's what i would say beautiful sir i would also like to uh, say something before you know uh, parting 
or just handing it and i have like since i've read the book i've actually gifted this book to somebody so this has the process has begun and my passing words uh, would be that success in uh, success and failures uh, are happen in context but one thing which makes the story inspiring nevertheless is personal integrity that personal elegance you know sipair the way the reason to live if it has that level of personal integrity which makes you say hats off even to the person who has not won the race you know that makes the story first of all incredibly beautiful it you can obviously learn a lot from him and it also makes the story very heroic and very inspiring in a way that even though you know that the person met an end which he didn't wish for you would still be rooting for that guy in his next journey or the next or the next so this story more than about entrepreneurship it's about personal integrity which which the protagonist has displayed while dealing with extraordinary hardships uh in 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 his journey of entrepreneurship so if you are interested in reading about somebody who didn't sell out as we say uh, you know a lot of people sell out in pressure in in a lot of ways a person who stood his ground ethically integrity wise please read this book because this will give you a manual on how to not sell out it's it's a beautiful book in that regard those would be my personal remarks i hope i did justice so, <laughs> more than me i think you did more justice than i did so that's <laughs> great very nice to hear this uh, uh, thank, thank you, so you sir and uh, with this i close the episode thank you so much for uh, you, giving me thank this you time thank you for having me here and my pleasure all right then